Hello, everyone. My name is Professor John Semple. I'm from Lund University, and I'm a professor of transfusion medicine. Uh, I'm going to give you a talk today about why does ITP occur? Um, and I'm going to try and uh, make it as simple as possible so that you can all follow along because autoimmunity and immunity are, are quite difficult subjects, even for immunologists to, to grapple with. These are my disclosures here. So why does ITP occur? And I really hope that it's not gonna be a horror movie for all of you, but I wanted to just show you that there is a requirement for the development of autoimmune disease. Um, it's a, it's a, this is a Venn diagram showing that there's three major components of autoimmunity. At the top, uh, you can see that there's genes that are involved. Autoimmunity tends to run in families. Um, and maybe some of you have relatives that have immune uh, abnormalities uh, and that uh, if you have ITP. The other important aspect of ITP is there's a problem in the immune response in patients with autoimmune uh, disease. It's usually what we call, it's got to do with immune regulation. And we're gonna talk a lot about immune regulation in the next 20 minutes or so, and how this is faulty in patients with ITP. And I think one of the most important aspects of autoimmunity are the environmental factors. And these of course include uh, infectious disease, but they could also include toxins um, and pollution, that type of thing. But environment plays a really important role potentially as the trigger of autoimmunity. So you really need uh, these three things coming together in order for a particular person to become autoimmune. So now I'd like to get in and talk to you about the cells of our immune system. And this is not an easy subject to grapple with. Um, uh, even immunologists have problems with regards to all the different cells. So I thought I made this talk up a few years ago and I thought that what, the best way to give it to lay individuals is to let's compare the immune cells to the military. And everyone's familiar with the military um, of course, at the top, there's the general, and these are the CD4 positive T cells that you may have um, heard. Now, the general, he went to military school in the thymus. It's an organ that's right under our breastbone, and these precursor T cells come from the bone marrow. And in the thymus, what they actually learn to do is not to react with our cell tissues. And once we know, once the thymus realizes that they don't react with self, self tissues, they're allowed to be released into the periphery. Now he won an award while he was in school. He was the best student for recognition of danger because that's really what these cells recognize. And the danger can be infections. It could be surgery. It could be any kind of trauma. And he's, a, he's, a, he's really a multitasker. He can do many different things all at once. And we're gonna talk about that. Now, next down from the general is the lieutenant general, at least in the, the British Army. It's a little different in the Canadian Army. But these are what we call the CD4 positive, CD25 positive, FOX P3 positive T regulatory cells. And I'm only going to talk about these antigens right here. This is a subset of CD4 positive T cells, and we refer to them normally as T regs. They also went to the thymus for military school. And uh, this fellow won the award for the best student for peace negotiation, which really um, translates to immunosuppression and civilian safety. He is against autoimmunity. So he tries to protect our tissues um, against autoimmune uh, reactivity. Down the line is the colonel. These are another subset of, of T cells, but these are marked by a CD8 antigen. So they're called CD8 positive T cells. They also, all T cells uh, go to school in the thymus. And this fellow won an award for best student in hand-to-hand -hand enemy destruction award. So these cells can bind to, for example, virally infected cells, and they can destroy them quite readily. There's the captains also, and these are what we call, what I call the B cells. Now they went to a different school than the T cells. The T cells go to the thymus, whereas the B cells, they develop in the bone marrow. And this fellow won an award for best student sniper. 
these are the cells that actually eventually will make all of our antibodies. So they are quite good snipers at producing these antibody molecules that can specifically bind to different antigens on cells like platelets. And lastly, of course, there's the privates. These are the macrophages. The macrophages went to, didn't really go to military school. They learned their craft on the streets. They are all over our body. They line our blood vessels. They, they're found in the spleen. They're found in all the different lymphoid tissues within our body. And they're really specifically trained to eat anything that comes around. And they're the real important cells that communicate with the general at the top and warn the general of danger. So they're real, they're kind of like garbage cans. They eat everything. And then they tell the, the general that there's problems with what they've eaten. So like all armies, soldiers, they want to fight, but some of them, unfortunately, are bad apples. This includes even the generals and the lieutenant generals. And it's really the lieutenant generals or the T-Reg's job to control the aggressive army at all times so that innocent civilians, in this case, platelets, are not for harm. So CD4 positive T cells, the generals, have the ability to react against ourselves. We are all autoimmune individuals. All of us have autoimmune T cells and B cells that circulate within our body, but only about 7% of us will actually come down with autoimmunity. And the reason for that is primarily because of the generals. The generals are what stop um, autoimmune or bad apples from reacting against ourselves. But any of these cell types can be autoreactive. The T regs, like I said, are the, the lieutenant generals are suppress these bad apples and, the, and that are autoreactive. So these cells can become autoreactive on the top, and it's the lieutenant generals that turn these cells off when they're autoreactive. And of course, the innocent civilians in this case, with regards to ITP. Um, is the platelets. So let's talk about first healthy immunity. What goes on in all of our bodies um, just normally uh, where we're not seeing any kind of infection or whatever. So in health, we have platelets that circulate in our, in our bloodstream. These platelets are come from the bone marrow and they have lots of different molecules on their surface and these can act as antigens. And as the platelets age, as they get older in the circulation, they change their shape. They kind of get wrinkles, if you will, as they get old. And it's these wrinkled platelets that are uh, really determine their lifespan. Platelets have a lifespan about eight to 10 days in our circulation. But once they get wrinkled, they are picked up and eaten by the privates, the macrophages. This is an absolutely normal process, and it goes on all the time in everyone, including patients with ITP. You're normal, not only you're, you're excessively destroying platelets, but you're also, you're also normally destroying the, what we call the senescent platelets or the older platelets. Well, when this occurs, the general says to the private or feels out the private and says, you know, I am seeing something private, but the T-regs, Tell the general, it's okay, sir, there's no problem. It's just the macrophage eating the platelets like it's normally supposed to do. And in that case, the CD4 positive T cell does not react, even though it can see the platelet antigens on the macrophage surface. So Tregs induce this state of what's called self-tolerance. We are tolerant against our own tissues. We don't, uh, they don't allow autoimmunity to occur. There's really no response against self. And that's in normal health. Well, so the, 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 the general then tells the macrophage to carry on private and they go about their own business as, as normal. But what about the immune response against infections? Our immune system has been evolved and geared about to fighting infectious agents, bacteria, viruses, fungi, um, and they're very good at it. We have billions of, of cells with different receptors on our T and B cells that can see various infectious agents. And we're now gonna talk a little bit about how that occurs. Why do we, how do we have an immune response against an infection? Well, 
here we are back to the same scenario. The macrophage is normally eating the older platelets within the spleen, but all of a sudden an infection occurs. And this infection, in this case, I've, I've made it a virus. And this virus also gets picked up by macrophages. But because the virus is so different with regards to the antigens on its surface than any of the other host tissues in the person, the macrophage becomes very strongly activated when it eats these infections. And this activated macrophage warns the general that there's danger. And that's really what it basically is intended to do. So the, the, the general being the CD4 positive T cell, you know, basically sees something quite bad because the macrophage is showing the, the, himself the, these uh, antigens from the virus. Now remember, there's the, the T reg that's up top. The T reg will allow this T cell to respond to the infection, but he will not allow that T reg to, to respond against, for example, platelets. It's to protect the innocent. How this occurs, we still don't know, but we do know from animal experiments and human experiments that these T regs are present during these responses and they can turn off the autoreactive nature of these T cells. Well, what happens is when the T cell becomes activated by the activated macrophage, it calls out the captain, the B cells, to charge. These B cells become activated by the infection and they differentiate into a cell called a plasma cell and they secrete antibodies that are specific for the infection. These antibodies bind to the infection and then they're very quickly destroyed by macrophages or other cells like dendritic cells. So this is the first line of defense against infections are antibodies and production of antibodies by B cells. And this is all under the control of this general the CD4 positive T cell. This will remove the infection initially, but sometimes infections come back and I'm sure you've had a cold where you get better for a day and then my goodness, you get an, a, another cold and it's probably the same infection, but the antibodies didn't do a proper enough job to remove the infection. So it, re it, it reinfects and it reoccurs. This again causes the macrophages to um, initiate the, the, the generals, the CD4 positive T cells, and they call in reinforcements. And these reinforcements are the kernel, and these are called CD8 positive T cells. And these cells are very good at binding to virally infected cells and killing those cells without killing other non-virally infected cells. And this, together with the antibodies that are produced, generally eliminate the infection. Once the infection has been eliminated, and this occurs for really 99% of most infections, but once they're eliminated, there's no more stimulus for the macrophages or the privates. So in fact, they go back to a normal kind of resting state and they go on with their own job of, for example, eating older platelets. Because the stimulus of the macrophage has gone away, the T, the, the, the T cell has become rested, the B cells go away, so antibodies are, uh, are not really being made anymore. And in fact, the CD8 positive T cells, they start to wane also because there's no more stimulus for them to be uh, 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 stimulated. Now, <clears throat> as an army goes, as you know, when there's a great victory, when an infection gets destroyed, there's always a speech. And this speech by this general, it goes like this. We will always remember this enemy. And if it returns, we will respond with greater vengeance. Now, what this actually means is a term that you may have heard about. It's called memory. The immune response in mammals anyways is really unique in that once it sees the antigen for the first time, a certain number of T cells will differentiate and go into the memory pool and they will float around our bodies. And if the infection comes back at a later date, there'll be many more of the T cells to respond to those infections and you'll get a much greater response. This is why, for example, when we vaccinate our children, we give them booster shots after the first vaccine. The vaccine basically tricks our immune system 
into responding to a particular infectious agent, for example, measles, but you have to give one or two boosters afterwards to really prop up the response and increase the memory pool. Once that memory pool has been generated by the vaccine, for example, um, you're immune for life. Uh, measles will not, uh, you're protected from measles basically for your whole life. So these memory cells, they float around your system for the rest of your life for certain infections. For tetanus, for example, you have to be boosted about every 10 or 12 years to, so that the immune system can remember it. And different infections from the vaccine point of view have different types of memory life. But this is truly the really amazing nature of the immune response is this memory response. So this is normal immunity. Everyone goes through it, including patients with ITP and patients that have autoimmunity. You have these clones, these T cells and B cells that can respond to infections. ITP patients don't generally get more infections than healthy individuals. Um, they might have problems when they do get an infection because their platelet counts drop, but that's for another reason. We can talk about that later. So what happens in autoimmunity? Well, before I say what happens in autoimmunity, I must digress and tell you a terrible, terrible secret. So remember the Lieutenant General, this is actual General Bing from the First World War. Um, remember his award, the best student for peace negotiations, immunosuppression and civilian safety, anti-autoimmunity. Well, he failed his exam and he was expelled from school. So the army in this case doesn't have a real peace negotiator and the civilians are at risk. In this case, for ITP, the platelets are at risk. And his failure allows the army to possibly destroy indiscriminately. So what happens in autoimmunity? Well, here we go again. Um, we have this normal platelet senescence um, uh, uh, mechanism where macrophages are eating older platelets. We don't know what actually stimulates the initial responses for autoimmunity. But the most favored hypothesis or theory is that there's an infection that occurs. Many autoimmune diseases are associated with infection. One of the best examples is newly diagnosed ITP in children. Um, they usually have a history of an infection three or four weeks before they come into the hospital with ITP. Um, and the interesting thing is as they clear the infection, about 80% of the children, um, they'll, they'll spontaneously remit. And that's because we know that the immune response against the infection is cross-reacting with their platelets. And once they clear the infection, those antibodies that bind to the platelets go away. Now, about 20% of the kids will go on to develop the chronic form, and that's the form where it has to be treated. So this person, again, gets an infection. And if you're, an, if you're a patient with ITP, this infection gets eaten by the macrophages and the macrophages become activated. Now, remember in this case, there's no Tregs in the individual. These Tregs are, are faulty or they're missing. So there's no way of controlling the immune response. But nonetheless, what happens is danger is given by the, by the private to the T cell. This time the T cell sees something really bad like you did in a normal infection because it's such a different antigenic structure than our normal self or platelets. And he calls out the captain to charge just like before. And in fact, the captain then generates, uh, the B cells uh, will produce antibodies which will bind to the infection and it will eventually clear the infection by the exact same macrophages that are clearing the older platelets. Once this happens, again, reinfection, uh, the, 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 the general in this case, once this happens, however, um, is not regulated by the missing T regs. And this is where he sees another enemy, those little guys in the top left corner, and he instructs the B cells to get them. So they generate antiplatelet autoantibodies because of the faulty commands from the general. And these autoantibodies are what bind to the platelets. And once they bind to the platelets, the macrophage eats them at even a greater rate. And it's this eating process in the spleen primarily that causes low platelet counts in individuals um, with ITP. It's one of the major mechanisms of how people become thrombocytopenic. Well, infections, just like I said before, can be, uh, they, they can occur again. 
And in this case, the general will call out the reinforcements. And in this case, because there's no T regs to uh, shut the T cells down from autoreactivity, he calls on the colonel to, uh, for reinforcements and to help the captain get those platelets. And those CD8 positive T cells, they not only get rid of the infection, but they can now bind to the platelets and they can in fact bind to megakaryocytes in the bone marrow. So they can cause platelet destruction in the spleen and they can cause production problems in the bone marrow. And this causes these two um, immune hits, the antibodies and the, T, the CD8 positive T cells can cause even lower platelet counts. So even a more profound thrombocytopenia. So in most patients with ITP, Tregs are either missing or they're faulty. They can't stop the immune system from recognizing cell tissues, in this case, platelet antigen. The B cells thus make autoantibodies against platelets and the CD8 positive T cells destroy the platelets and megakaryocyte. And it's these two immune reactions that are the primary cause of thrombocytopenia in ITP. So just for my last slide, I wanna just um, give you so an update on now, um, this is certainly co more complicated, and I'm not gonna go into this, but uh, I did a review in the current opinion of hematology uh, last year, and this is the latest ITP pathophysiology. And all I wanna really can, uh, show you is that even today, Tregs are still at the center of the pathophysiology of ITP. And there's a number of interesting papers, almost 75 papers, on pathophysiology were published of between 2019 and 20. And this just shows the summary of what I wrote in the, in the review. Um, there's a variety of new uh, uh, concepts in pathophysiology that involved a whole variety of different immune cells. And even uh, there's new therapies that are certainly being looked at within, the pa within these patients. But Tregs are central to the pathophysiology of ITP. And I think that should be really the take home message with you. So I'd like to thank you for your attention and I'll be glad to answer any questions uh, during the question period. Thank you so much for listening.